Do you have any uh, favorite stories from the Mayor Daley period, interactions with him? or? Well, I, I often uh, wish I would have uh, talked into a recorder every night after uh, the day was done and, and recorded some of these vignettes, but uh, I probably have to think about uh, I remember going to uh, Springfield, uh, and it was the uh, 68 convention, and we were down there uh, to elect the um, the um, leaders of the Illinois Democratic uh, Convention uh, delegation, and uh, even though we had been um, elected popularly, there were other um, functions and at-large delegates that had to be elected by the elected delegates. So we were in the hotel in uh, Springfield, I think it was the Abraham Lincoln, and um, they conducted an election. It was a secret election of who was going to be the leader of the delegation, who were going to be the, the um, at large delegates and Adlai Stevenson was a leader of the the um, quote unquote reform group or the anti daily group whatever so uh, anyway uh, daily appointed uh, the uh, uh, counters of the ballots and then he appointed Edward Oleak and me and Wilson Frost so we adjourned to another room and count the ballots and come back and Verdoliak says to mayor and he had his sleeves rolled up at that point, and he had a nice, cool Heineken's that he was sipping on. And he said, "Mayor, I've got bad news for you." He said, um, "Our uh, our slate didn't win." And Daly looked up at him and he said, "Well, I think you better go back and count them again." <laughs> <laughs> um, th this is an indication that we're ready to end the roll. Okay. So why don't we stop now? Take a short break. Uh, this is uh, tape two. I'm Gary Johnson, and our oral history today is with uh, Edward Burke. Um, 1968 was not only a big year in American history, it was a big year in your life. You've already described how your father passed away and how you became uh, a committeeman and an alderman, but something very personal happened as well. Uh, my father died May 11th. Ann and I were married on uh, May 25th. Uh, we took our three-day honeymoon in Lake Geneva, and I got a call from Judge Hermes to come back from my honeymoon that I had to run for uh, Democratic Ward Committeeman. On July 1st, I was uh, elected uh, Committeeman. Um, of course, in the month of uh, June, I graduated uh, law school. I began studying for the bar. And at the same time, Ann was uh, organizing the first ever uh, Special Olympics, which uh, took place in uh, July 1968 at Soldier Field. How, how did you cope with the whole emotional side of all of the above? It's, it's almost incomprehensible. Yeah, well, I think that when all those things are happening, you, you probably go on uh, automatic pilot. And I didn't really think that there was much chance I was going to pass the bar. Um, I just went ahead and took it, thinking in my mind I was going to have to take it again, but somehow or another I passed. Well, turning back to uh, Mayor Daley, um, tell us what the Shackman decree meant in terms of uh, the old patronage system yeah. and the changes it brought about. Well, I, I think the um, Democratic organization, as it was known through most of the uh, 20th century, was a creature of Anton Cermak, who uh, became mayor of Chicago when uh, he defeated Big Bill Thompson in the 1931 election. Last Republican, by the way, to be a mayor of Chicago. Uh, he died in uh, 19. 33 as a result of a, a bullet wound he sustained in uh, Miami, Florida. Uh, the uh, person that pulled the trigger in that uh, pistol was a man by the name of Giuseppe Zangara. 
who uh, was arrested on the scene in Oceanfront Park in Miami. And just as another little interesting Chicago aside, exactly 29 days elapsed from the night Giuseppe Zangara was arrested and the day that the switch was pulled in the electric chair in uh, Florida. Arrest, arraignment, Ooh. trial, appeal, petition for clemency, execution. 29 days. Oh my goodness. Now do you subscribe to the theory that the target was Cermak or was I the do. target Roosevelt? Um, well if you look at the uh, the physical layout of, of uh, where uh, Cermak was and where Roosevelt was when the shots were fired, it's pretty clear uh, who Zangara was uh, aiming at. And, and part of the, the uh, theory advanced by some Chicago historians is that uh, the, the reason that was a, a mob hit uh, on uh, Cermak is that um, after uh, Cermak was elected mayor, and by the way, Cermak was no um, altar boy. He was a product of big city Chicago politics, had served as president of the county board, he served in the legislature. Um, he had his own um, gang that he wanted to supplant the Capone mob. And uh, by that point, uh, the Capone mob was really the nitty mob. Capone had already gone to jail. And um, as the story goes, uh, this one particular afternoon, two Chicago police sergeants uh, from Cermak's own mayoral security detail confronted Frank Nitty in his office on LaSalle Street. That's how uh, sophisticated the mob operation was. They weren't uh, out on the west side or in Cicero. Nitty's office was actually in a high-rise uh, office building on LaSalle Street. Anyway, the two police sergeants uh, burst into his office and shots ring out. Uh, Lang and Miller were the two police sergeants. Uh, made two mistakes. Number one, when they shot Nitty, they didn't check that he was dead because he survived his wounds. And number two, when they were going into the building, they um, said to a uniform cop who was directing traffic out on LaSalle Street, you come with us. And so when the case got to court, the uniform cop told the truth that uh, Lang shot Nitty in cold blood and then gave himself a little flesh wound with his own revolver to make it look like there was a gun battle. Well, the charges against Nitty were dropped, and uh, the two police sergeants were uh, charged with uh, aggravated assault or attempted murder or whatever. From that point on, uh, Cermak never traveled anywhere unless he was in a bulletproof uh, limousine, and he bought himself a bulletproof vest. Uh, he knew that the Nitty mob was going to come after him. Um, several days after the Nitty shooting, the, um, the individual that Cermak had identified as the successor to the Nitty mob was found uh, dead on the side of a road out uh, in Des Plaines. Um, obviously, when he was in uh, Oceanfront Park that night, he didn't have his armor-plated limousine. He didn't have his bulletproof vest. So Cermak is the one who... who more or less began the hiring system. Absolutely. And then the Kelly Nash operation continued it, perfected Actually, it. at the time of Cermak's uh, death, uh, Tom Nash was the uh, Democratic Party chairman, uh, collaborated very closely with Cermak, which is uh, why um, Nash wanted his own person as mayor. And uh, the way that Kelly became the mayor was an interesting story in and of itself. Um, obviously, just like Richard J. Daley, no one anticipated that 
Cermak was going to die suddenly in office. So now the city council has to select a successor. Well, Tom Nash, the head of the party, wants Ed Kelly, who at that time was chief engineer at the uh, Water Reclamation uh, District, or the Metropolitan Sanitary District, as it was known in the 1930s. Um, so he wants Kelly. There's only one problem. The law is that in order to be the acting mayor, you have to be a member of the city council. Kelly wasn't a member of the city council. Also in those days, there was no temporary appointment to the city council. Today, if that uh, occurred, it would be conceivable that um, the uh, alderman resigned and the acting mayor uh, appoint a successor and then that person could be elected to acting mayor. So uh, what happens is if you ever go to the fifth floor of the mayor's office at City Hall, you'll see uh, a picture. All the mayor's pictures are on the wall. But between Cermak and Kelly, there's a picture of Frank Corr, who served about 30 days. He was a member of the city council, and he was uh, agreeable to be an interim caretaker. Uh, so the city council met, uh, selected Corr as the acting mayor. The uh, legislature convened, passed a law that permits the city council to elect anyone it wants as the acting mayor. So when that legislation is signed, city council reconvenes, the acting mayor core tenders his resignation, the city council elects Ed Kelly as the acting mayor. Ed Kelly is sworn in, legislature changes the law right back to what it was before they selected him, which was what it was on the day that Richard J. Daley died in 1976. So how did, how did the system work? How did the hiring system work? In, you, uh, you went to your, your local uh, ward committeeman, and your ward committeeman wrote you a uh, letter. Uh, he would sponsor you, and uh, then you'd take that letter down to the Democratic Party headquarters, and all the uh, uh, elected officials ran their patronage right through the De Democratic Party uh, Central Committee offices, which was why the Democratic Party chairman was so important. 